Well, hey there, reader friends. I'm Erica, and welcome back to my channel. And it's time for another Tag Tuesday. Really, Tag Tuesdays are like my favorite videos to make. I enjoy them so much. I hope you enjoy them as well. Today, I'm going to be doing the Liar Liar book tag, which is an original tag by Becky over at Coffee Cocktails and Books. And she tagged me, and I was like, yay, I've been tagged in an original tag. And Thanks for tagging me, Becky. The Liar Liar book tag is based on the book Lies You Never Told Me by Jennifer Donaldson, which I have not read. So the references, I don't get, but the questions, I have answers. Here we go. Number one, Elise, a girl caught in a web of lies. What's a lie you've told about a book? For this question, I think we need to go and visit Erica from the past, college-aged Erica. Erica aged, oh what, 20, 21? Yeah, Twilight is completely horrible. The writing in it is so bad. You can't even really read it. Oh my gosh. I was really into it in high school, but now I can't even believe I liked that stuff. What was my password? Oh yeah, okay. Ooh, twilighted.net. Here we go. Let's see anything updated. Oh my gosh, Master of the Universe updated. I have to read this right now, right now. Aren't we glad that my fashion wardrobe has like moved beyond t-shirts and hoodies? I am. Number two, Gabe, a guy trapped in someone else's web of lies. What's a book that's trapped you recently? So I have to be honest, I'm kind of in a bit of a reading slump. It's taken me quite a while to finish the books that I've been reading, they haven't really captured my attention, if I'm honest. I've kind of had to force myself to finish them. But the last book that really captured me and kept my attention, and I stayed up way too late reading, was when I reread Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo for Sabathon. I was enraptured. Mainly because I had forgotten, like, almost 80% of what happened, but also because it's so good. And if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Number three, Catherine, a girl looking for a fresh start. What's a book you wish you could reread for the first time all over again? I am going to go with two books. I'm kind of cheating on this one. Sorry, Becky, but I'm cheating. It's my channel. I'm going to do what I want. The first book I wish I could reread for the first time again, read for the first time again, you know, read again completely not knowing what's happening is this one. The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I first read this as an audiobook when I think I was like in fourth or fifth grade. As a tweener, I think I was probably nine or ten, so preteen, I don't think that I got a lot of the satire and like the jokes that the narrator puts into this story because if you don't know about the way this book is framed, it's framed as if this narrator has gone to find the great epic story that his grandfather read to him when he was a child and then he finds out that that epic story is esoteric and tedious and not as exciting as he remembers so he decides to like rewrite the story and that becomes the princess bride. I don't know the sarcasm and the satire I don't think I got that as a child. I think I found the narrator probably really annoying and because of that I still when I read it now find the narrator kind of annoying and I think I would have a different appreciation for him if I read it as an adult who's been through English classes and understands how satire works. I feel like I would enjoy the narrator more and I just can't because I just can't. Another book I really would like to be able to read for the first time again is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas because it's such a ride the first time and you're just, I was just an emotional like mess and it was so wonderful to see my ship sail and you know, you'll never really have that same feeling again. Number four, Sasha, a girl who would do anything to win back her ex. What's a book you're obsessed with? My uh, nerdy side is really going to come out with this one. I am currently obsessed with this book, The World of All Souls by Deborah Harkness, which is like essentially an encyclopedia based in her world that she's created for her All Souls trilogy. And I love it. I, 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 I love it. I am obsessed with all the like when authors release encyclopedias in their about their worlds, I want to read the whole thing. I want to know all the layers. I want to know all the details. So moving beyond the characters in Lies You Never Told Me, Becky also had two questions that were just kind of about lying and 
deception and that sort of stuff. So number five is your favorite books featuring deception, which was hard for me to think of because I don't tend to like heist type stories or mysteries or thrillers. They're not my go-to genres. So I guess I'm going to be boring and I'm going to go with a series I've already talked about. These guys, these guys, I like these guys and there's definite deception that happens. Deception in the form of Kaz Brecker. Number six, your favorite books with an unreliable narrator. I actually really enjoy when I find a book with a uh, unreliable narrator. I find it really interesting. And when I find one that is characterized well and characterized, I don't know what's going on with words today, guys. But anyways, that's a like well-developed character and the plot's good. And I, 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 where it's, as if the unreliability is revealed and so you go in completely trusting that character or maybe kind of maybe a little bit not trusting but you think they're a good person you think that they're trustworthy and then something happens and you're like well maybe they're not so trustworthy and then you have to like play a mental game with yourself I like that I have three books that have unreliable narrators that I really enjoy the first one is Codename Verity by Elizabeth Ween Verity is unreliable I mean she's a spy Spies in and of themselves are unreliable. So what is the truth? What side is she on? You gotta read the whole thing to find out. And even then you're kind of like, what lines has she crossed and not crossed? She is a great narrator, but she is definitely unreliable. Another book I really enjoy that has an unreliable narrator is Monster by Walter Dean Myers. This actually is a book that's often taught in English classes to show what an unreliable narrator is. The form of this book is really interesting in that it is kind of mixed media and written as if it's a screenplay because the narrator enjoys film and wants to be a filmmaker. But in the process, you kind of have to navigate the waters of, is this narrator telling the truth about the crime that he is being tried for? Is he being completely honest or is he painting things a certain way? And also if he's making it into a film, he has a point of view. Is his point of view the honest one? I really enjoyed that book. And the final book with an unreliable narrator that I enjoy quite a bit is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte because I am a romantic Victorian nerd. So one thing I think a lot of people that haven't read this book don't realize is that it is a frame narrative that starts off in one point of view, Mr. Lockwood, who is an outsider who comes to Wuthering Heights and meets Mrs. Dean, Mrs. Dean. And she is the housekeeper slash governess. Well, she's not really a governess. I guess also she's the housekeeper of Wuthering Heights. And from from her, he gets the story of Kathy and Heathcliff. So we're kind of hearing this story through two point of views, like it's layered. Mrs. Dean has her clear point of view for how she views what's happened in the past, and Mr. Lockwood probably has his clear point of view for what happened with the way that Mrs. Lockwood is telling the tale, and because of that, are we getting the real story for what happened all those years ago? There's all kinds of interpretations you can do with this book if you look at it as a book with an unreliable narrator. Number seven, who do you tag? I'm gonna tag all the people. <laughs> I'm gonna tag Rhiannon at Crescent Moon Reads, Julie at Pages and Pens, Alex at Alex's Fiction Addiction, Sam at A Bear and a Bee Books, and Jordan at The Lost Reader. I'll leave links to all of their channels down below. I really like watching their videos. I also think they'll have some interesting answers for these questions. So. You've been tagged, guys. Enjoy. Have fun. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. Subscribe if you'd like to, and I'll see you next time. Bye! <sighs> guys, my light is disappearing because the clouds are coming and we're supposed to get storms, and I'm sorry. I love my apartment's natural light, but because of the way it is, this, this might get really interesting, this lighting situation. I feel like I'm been touched by an angel, like the halo was glowing on me. I'm not an angel, guys.